Good evening. Coming up on the weekend report, some First United Methodist Church members may mount a drive to get the ousted Reverend Walker Raleigh back in the pulpit. A memorandum from Oliver North and meant for President Reagan could lead to impeachment hearings against the president. And a Plano man is proudly displaying his flags today. His story and much more next on the Weekend Report. Stay with us. You'll have a crush on lobster. Your heart's gonna melt. Tales of tender sweet surrender like you never felt. It's the Lobster Fest at Red Lobster. Lobster dish is so delicious. From $7.95. With every dip you're gonna put. Kids eat for $1.95. Red Lobster, we know how you love seafood. At our Lobster Fest. Come love our lobster and steak dinner. $10.95, Friday, Saturday only. Let the beauty shine through. That's exactly what Vaughn Bassett did in crafting this solid oak bedroom. They revealed the richness of the graining along with the glorious golden hue of the wood. Haverty's is featuring this handsome group at $10.99, which includes dresser, hutch mirror, and fuller queen-size bedstead. Armoire and nightstand also specially priced now at Haverty's. Haverty's makes it home. 私の娘はね、今シャトルに住んでるんですよ。あんなに遠くにいてもまだ私を上達ばっかりして笑わせるんですよ。先週も電話かかってきましてね、お父さん、風邪をひかないようにするには、ビタミン<笑> Only AT&T keeps you this close anywhere in the world. AT&T International Long Distance. Look, they're my parents, and I tell you, they're acting different. I mean, they go dancing. Herbert and Jane dancing. I know, Mother thinks it's fun. She wears eye makeup now. I don't know what's gotten into them. Hmm, who says this? Hmm. Why not they act their age? To help them get more out of life, people are eating better. Some have found Kellogg's product 19, 100% of 12 vitamins and minerals. Feel good about yourself. Tennis? They don't play tennis. Feel like 19 again. From KDFW-TV, Dallas-Fort Worth, this is Channel 4 News. The Weekend Report with Barbara White, meteorologist Ron Jackson, and Mark Lewis on sports. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Barbara has today off. Our top story, a church divided. That is the first United Methodist Church in the wake of its decision to find a replacement for Reverend Walker Raley. The congregation is split over that decision and some parishioners are taking action on their own. Betty Smith has more. Uh, how did he feel about on Friday, the Pastor Parish Relations Committee of First United Methodist Church announced plans to replace Reverend Walker Raley. Raley is under care at a psychiatric hospital after a suicide attempt and an attack on his wife Peggy, who remains in a coma. The identity of her attacker is still a mystery, and the minister's attorney refuses to let police question him. The church's decision to replace Raley has prompted some parishioners to form their own committee to correct what they call a terrible mistake. What we want to do now is try to heal the church rather than respond in anger. Some people have characterized this as an old folks versus young folks battle. Some people have characterized this as a pro-walker versus the anti-walker people. It's nothing like that at all. No firm plans have been made, but Minga says he expects his committee to hold a series of open meetings and start a petition drive asking that the decision to replace Raley be reversed. Head of the Pastor Parish Relations Committee, Ralph Shannon, told Channel 4, I have no intention of debating this in the media, and I do not intend to ask the committee to reverse its decision. Some call that decision hasty, shocking, and claim the congregation was not consulted beforehand. The frustration is reading in the newspaper what your church is doing and not being told in church what your church is doing. City Councilman Holcomb has joined Mingus' effort to have the church's decision reversed. While Mingus feels the congregation is overwhelmingly behind them, reaction was mixed. The church really needs to go on to have some future direction. And we believe that the Pastor Paris Relations Committee did this in good faith, that they considered it very, very long, very hard. I would support another committee to reverse the decision. 
I, th I think Walker is innocent until proven guilty. Parishioners may disagree on the Rayleigh decision, but they agree the congregation needs to pull together as a family and start to heal its wounds. Betty Smith, Channel 4 News. In other news, an undated memorandum drafted by former national security aide Oliver North to President Reagan could have serious consequences for the president. Mr. Reagan has said he knew nothing of the diversion of Iran arms sale profits to Nicaraguan rebels, but the memorandum mentioned a proposal to divert those funds. Today on This Week with David Brinkley, House Iran-Contra Committee Chairman Lee Hamilton said if the president saw that memo, that could be grounds for impeachment hearings against the president. But I don't have any doubt at all that that kind of evidence would be exceedingly serious uh, for the president because the president's uh, one of his major points of course has been uh, that he did not know of the diversion what would congress do you think feel compelled to do in a case like that uh, i think it is likely if uh, if that occurred and uh, let us emphasize this uh, the if uh, that if it occurred uh, you would have a demand for uh, impeachment proceedings Elsewhere, Iran's embassy officials in Beirut are denying reports that some of the American hostages being held in Lebanon have been moved to Iran. An as yet unconfirmed report published yesterday in a Beirut newspaper said some of the hostages had been taken to Tehran for questioning where they might be put on trial. A spokesman for the Iranian government says it has had nothing to do with the hostages. Iranian officials also denied Anglican church envoy Terry Waite missing since January has been taken to Tehran. President Reagan's plan to place U.S. flags on Kuwaiti oil tankers in the Persian Gulf was criticized by former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger today. On NBC's Meet the Press, Kissinger said that a policy involving American protection is unwarranted and could get the United States over-involved in the war between Iran and Iraq. The level of attacks on shipping in the Gulf this year seems to be about the same as it was last year. Uh, secondly, uh, most of the attacks come from Iraq, not from Iran. About two-thirds of the attacks come from Iraq. So by our getting involved on, in effect, the Iraq side, we're taking on a belligerent commitment in a war in which it isn't clear to me how it is going to end. The Reagan administration's proposal would place flags on half of Kuwaiti's oil tankers and would commit the U.S. to defend them from attacks as part of the Iran-Iraq war. Before leaving his native Poland today, Pope John Paul arranged another hastily called meeting with Poland's communist leader, General Wojciech Jaruzelski. During his one-week visit, several high-ranking Polish officials have complained about the tone of the pontiff's speeches. Pope John Paul has praised the now-outlawed Solidarity Trade Union movement. Today, the Pope told Polish bishops he wants to establish diplomatic relations between the Vatican and Poland. No Soviet bloc state has diplomatic ties with the Holy See. Elsewhere, a surprise move today by the South Korean government. For the past five days, riot police had surrounded the Catholic Cathedral in Seoul, where anti-government demonstrators had been holed up. But today, after battling with thousands in the streets demonstrating their support of those students, the South Korean government told the radical student protesters they were free to go and that they would not face charges. Still ahead, a medical breakthrough in the treatment of eye injuries. A dissolving contact lens will have details right after these messages. Is it the most trouble-free car in its class sold in the United States today? The Nissan Sentra. That's right. In the latest J.D. Power new car survey, Nissan Sentra was named the economy car with the least problems, the fewest headaches. In other words, the most quality. So, if quality and dependability is how you judge a car, the only choice you have to make is which Nissan Sentra you want. We make you feel like driving, and the name is Nissan. I've got muscle. My snapper lawn tractor, built with heavy-duty steel, armed with side discharge and 12 forward speeds, with the power to cut tall grass down to size. I keep my house clean. Snapper's high back keeps my lawn clean, just like my vacuum. So the most work I do is empty the twin bag catcher. It's easy. It's powerful. It's a snap with Snapper. Spring savings going on now at Leonard's Farm Store in Fort Worth and McKinney Outdoor Services, McKinney. 
It's here. The hot home project event of the season. Huge summer sizzler savings now at Payless Cashways. Like Ortho Home Pest Control. Ready to use indoors or out. $4.87 a gallon after rebate. Hot buy store wide. Like a better build self-storing storm door. Comes complete with tempered safety glass and screen. Now only $36.66. Come on, we got what you need. Great summer sizzler savings right now at Payless Cashways. Don't do it yourself without us. Payless Cashways. Richardson police are investigating the shooting of a 19-year-old black male this afternoon. Police arrived at apartments in the 1300 block of Spring Valley Road to answer reports of gunshots where they discovered the body, a body rather, near a swimming pool. The victim had apparently been shot once in the back by what is believed to be a small caliber handgun. Richardson authorities are not releasing the name of the victim until notification of the next of kin. The victim was pronounced dead on arrival at Medical City, Dallas. In Richardson, authorities say there are no suspects, no motives for the slaying at this time. Elsewhere, a hearing tomorrow will help to determine whether a mistrial is necessary in the capital murder conviction of Andre Anthony Lewis. The hearing has been scheduled because a juror suffered a nervous breakdown. Lewis was convicted, as you may recall, June 1st of fatally shooting Matt McKay during a convenience store robbery in Carrollton in 1985. The juror had the breakdown after the verdict. State law requires a mistrial if a juror becomes disabled after the judge reads the charge and before a verdict is reached. And after a month of questioning prospective jurors in the highly publicized capital murder trial of Jerry Animal McFadden, a jury has now been seated. Pre-trial motions are set to begin tomorrow in Belton. 39-year-old McFadden was captured last summer after escaping from the Upshur County Jail and leading Texas authorities on a massive three-day manhunt. McFadden is accused in the May 1986 slaying of a Hawkins teenage girl. There is a breakthrough in the treatment of eye injuries. It's a dissolving contact lens made of collagen, and doctors say it can relieve eye injuries within hours. These three patients have something in common, an injured cornea. Mine felt like I had a thread that was going across the cornea in my eye. It was so painful that I could not open my eye. Made me feel like tearing my eyeball out. I thought I was going blind in my eye, because. My vision was very impaired. I mean, I couldn't see. Diagnosis. Lorene Whitlock has dry eyes. Paul Allen, a swollen cornea with a bubble on it. And Rita Turner has a viral infection. Now, even though each patient has a different eye problem, all of them are getting the same treatment, a collagen shield. It's brand new, it looks like a contact lens, and it dissolves in the eye. The reason why it works is that the cornea is made up of collagen. So what happens is, is that the cornea that needs to heal needs to form collagen material to use as building blocks to make the cornea back to normal. After the cornea collagen contact is put in the eye, an exam ensures proper placement. They say 2 to 12 hours, but it usually absorbs within about 12 hours. Now, corneas will heal all by themselves, but according to Dr. Marmer, the collagen shield will heal the eye quicker and more effectively. And for patients who know the pain of corneal injuries, the shield helps ease some of that discomfort. It feels so much better. I cannot believe that it's the same eye that I came in here with this morning. This is Diane Rossi reporting. Well, Ron, was it a hot and muggy Sunday in yes. the Metroplex? It was Ooh. a nice day if you had your own swimming pool, I guess. And or... you were in it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the humidity was awful today, up to around 60%, and it's going to continue to be hot and sticky. We'll tell you all about it after this. suspect a thing, but he planned it for weeks to end this evening at the top of the world. You always remember the time and the place he asked you to spend the rest of your life with him. For this and all your significant moments, Omega. Available at Haltom's Jewelers.
Miguel Mendez and his classmates are growing up on a very special island. An island blessed with palm-lined beaches, exotic tropical forests, and gentle trade winds. Their island is also a model for peace and progress in the Caribbean. An island of happiness and pride. Miguel Mendez and his friends are growing up on Puerto Rico, the shining star of the Caribbean. Texans are moving to Texas Commerce. Chili's is one of the fastest growing restaurants in Texas, so we needed a bank that moves fast. Take cash management. We gave three different banks a shot at it. Texas Commerce won, hands down. When it came to banking, it was Texas Commerce. No place else. Texans are moving to Texas Commerce. Here at DFW Airport, climbed up to 96 degrees, and for the next couple of days, we should continue to see afternoon readings mostly in the low to mid 90s. Here's Channel 4's Doppler radar at the present time. Uh, really, no significant precipitation showing up in Dallas or Tarrant counties. And I point that out simply because about 15 minutes ago, there were some pretty good thunderstorms taking place uh, right around Love Field in Dallas, right about here, just outside of Northwest Highway. They quickly diminished. And that's the way it's going to be for the next couple of days with a very unstable air mass over the area. There is a possibility of a few widely scattered showers and thunderstorms, but your chances of seeing any rain are less than 20%. This is the latest satellite picture. Once again, quite a bit of cloudiness in the Pine Belt area of Far East Texas where there are some very heavy thunderstorms around Shreveport. Severe thunderstorm warnings have been posted there. Also, a few widely scattered showers along the Gulf Coast states, but most of the rain shower activity has lightened up quite a bit compared to what they have had over the last couple of days. Temperatures across the state, 96 degrees here at home. Also at Waco, it's 90 degrees at Houston. Look at this, 76 degrees at Brownsville. Very unusual to see them with the coolest temperature in the state. It's 90 degrees at Corpus Christi and 91 at Little Rock. Here at home, the temperature, 96. Relative humidity at 40%. And with those two ingredients, that puts our heat index, this is what it feels like outside, at 102. Barometric pressure falling in the winds are northwest at about 5 miles per hour. The daytime high, the current temperature of 96. The overnight low this morning is 73. Normals for this time of year are 93 and 71. No reports of any precip. And even though it was a hot and sticky day, we were about 9 degrees away from a record high, which was 105, set back in 1911. Elsewhere across the country, some very heavy showers and thunderstorms over the lower Mississippi Valley, stretching into the mid-Atlantic. Clear to partly cloudy skies over the northern plains as well as the Midwest, and once again it was a scorcher today. Chicago, Illinois, as well as Green Bay, Wisconsin, had a record high of 95 degrees, and for the first time in 32 years, the temperature reached 100 degrees in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which was, to say the least, a record high. Tomorrow's forecast map, heavy thunderstorms will continue in the southeast. I think we'll see a day like what we had today. Plenty of sunshine and plenty of humidity with the possibility of a few late afternoon thunderstorms. Sunny conditions for the northeast and once again a sizzler for much of the northern plains. Tomorrow's daytime high temperatures. Once again a large portion of the country should see readings mostly in the 90s. 100s up north as well as in the desert southwest. A little bit on the cool side in the Pacific northwest with afternoon readings mostly in the 60s and 70s. Here's my forecast for Dallas-Fort Worth and most of North Texas, clear and mild with an overnight low about 70, then mostly sunny, hot, and humid tomorrow, much like what we had today with a daytime high near 95. Here's the extended forecast and really no significant precipitation expected for the next several days. The best chance of rain will probably occur towards the end of the week. Look for daytime highs to be mostly in the low 90s. That's a look at the weather. I think uh, we're about the only two uh, going for the Celtics this afternoon. I know we? it. Boy, did we blow it, yeah, and did they sure. blow it. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. <right. laughs> well, we'll uh, have highlights of that game, or lowlights, depending on who you're rooting for next. And also, the sidekicks are gearing up for game number four with Tacoma after their big win in game three. Mark Lewis will have all the details right after these messages. You want to follow my special barbecue recipe? You start by determining what stage of hot you want. There's your mild, your semi-hot, your hot, and your cut in the afterburners. About that stage, you want plenty of good, cold, natural light on hand. The beer with the taste for food. My personal choice, Armor Pearson. 
Yeah, all natural, less filling. It's natural light from Anheuser Busch. Ladies, it looks like you want a natural. That's not hot. Wouldn't eat but halfway through a two by four. It was night, and she had a beauty that captivated my soul. I dared hope for no more than a fleeting glance, a glimmer of recognition. Yet what she gave me was so much more. And that is what eating a Dove Bar is like. Nah, it can't be that good. I swear it. National Bank. Most banks stick you with a minimum balance requirement for free checking that can turn your life into a financial balancing act. Excellent. And keeping that balance up can shortchange everyone around you. But now at Allied Banks, you don't need a minimum balance to have free checking. Allied's new yeah. merit checking, free checking with no minimum balance. It can really save you. Well, Mark, championship basketball series, now history. That's right. Uh, no game seven, as it were. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of scary when I actually predict something correct. Uh, you did. But, and uh, I lost my money. What can I say? Oh, well. <laughs> Two years ago, the Lakers did win the world championship on the road in Boston Garden, so you can understand their desire to wrap up this series in front of their fans at the Forum today. The only question was, could Magic and the guys regain the form they had in games one and two, or would Boston send this series to the decisive game seven on Tuesday night? L.A. was out of the gate quickly today. James Worthy, who was pathetic in Boston Garden, 16 points in the first half. Lakers led 8-2. But then the Celtics go on a tear, led by Kevin McHale. A 15-2 run to take a seven-point lead at the end of the first quarter, 32-25. Pat Riley is understandably concerned. But Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, what a great game today. 19 points in the first half. However, he gets three fouls, has to go to the bench. That opens the way for Dennis Johnson. What a first half he had. 14 points, 33 on the day. 56-51 halftime lead for Boston, but then the third quarter came around and watched James Worthy steal off to Magic Johnson. Magic had 12 of his 16 in the third quarter. L.A. outscores Boston 30-12 on an 18-2 run, and Kareem, what a great game he had today. A season high, 32. The Lakers win at 106-93. Magic, the only three-time MVP, and the Lakers win their fourth title in the 1980s. Larry Bird only had 16 points today in the final decisive game of this series. Now, locally, the fans of the Sidekicks still celebrating last night's win. You really can't emphasize the importance of the Sidekicks' Mr. Everything tattoo. On four of the five kicks, goals, or the tattoo, I should say, had a hand or foot in getting the ball in the net. Another sellout of 16,824. Delighted by the little armadillo. Here he assists Mark Carpin for the first goal of the game. Then in the latter stages of this tight contest with the Stars, Tattoo will take care of business himself. His first goal here, then he would score with the left foot a little later on to help put the kicks up by one goal, four to three. Kevin Smith will add an open net goal to give the kicks an insurance goal, then they win this game three, five to three to cut that series in half, two to one Tacoma now. The kicks hoping for a repeat performance tonight in game four to send the series back to Tacoma tied at two apiece. We will have highlights of game four tonight at 10. The Rangers wind up their three-game homestand with the Oakland A's in about 10 minutes at the stadium. Eddie Correa continues to be disappointing. He gives up the solo homer last night to A's rookie Mark McGuire. And then the same inning, another A's freshman, Terry Steinbach, the catcher, will touch Eddie Correa for a three-run blast. And it was bye-bye Eddie. He was headed towards the showers. But the Rangers did manage to come back. They do have a potent hitting attack this year. Larry Parrish helps get the Rangers back within two with his 15th homer of the year. Then in the sixth inning, Odell B. McDowell, who has raised his average 60 points in the last month, connects with this three-run dinger to get the Rangers even at eight apiece. However, in the seventh inning, Terry Steinbach again will hit the long ball. This, his second of the game, off reliever Paul Kilgus, and the A's hold on in the slugfest to beat the Rangers 10-8. This Ranger team desperately in need of some solid pitching to right itself before they get too far behind the division-leading Twins. 
Highlights of tonight's game with Chuck Huff on the Hill at 10 o'clock. At Yankee Stadium today, the Brew Crew and Yanks go at it. Rick Cerrone here in the bottom of the eighth, a two-run single, and the New York Yankees leading this ball game 4-3. to three. However, in the ninth inning, the Brew Crew comes back. Watch Dale Spain hit one off Dave Rigetti. This one is out of the yard. He is followed by teammate Bill Schroeder with a two-run blast. Schroeder four for four today. You see the final. Milwaukee beats the Yankees six to four. Elsewhere in the American League, Detroit shades Boston two to one. Toronto's 11-game winning streak is snapped by Baltimore. Minnesota beats Chicago on the strength of a Laudner Grand Slam. California blanks Kansas City 12 nothing in their early out west. Cleveland and Seattle in the top of the first. At Three River Stadium today, the Mets taking on the Pirates. Fourth inning, Keith Hernandez says bye-bye to a Brian Fisher delivery, his eighth of the year. And then he tells Tom Seaver in the dugout how he managed to hit it. Tommy C with the shades on. The Bucks came back with three runs in their half of the fourth, but Daryl Strawberry hits his 17th homer of the year in the fifth inning, and the Mets go on to beat Pittsburgh 7-3. to Elsewhere in the National League, Mike Schmidt hits three home runs as Philadelphia beats Montreal. St. Louis edges Chicago. They are now up by six games in the National League East. Cincinnati by one run over Atlanta, 4-3. to three. San Diego, a modest three-game winning streak, beats San Francisco, 4-3 to three at the stick. And Houston just over L.A. in Dodger Stadium, the final there, 4-1. In golf, all Mike Reed had to do this afternoon in his first tournament to win it was play the same kind of steady golf he had since Thursday, but steady Mike Reed went south on the back nine today. Number 16, especially troublesome. Look at this shot. In the deep rough, he can't get the ball more than four feet. He double bogeys here and winds up with a 4 over 75 and a tie for fourth place. J.C. Snead on 18 with the eagle attempt for the outright win right by the cup. He gets the birdie and will go to sudden death overtime. Roger Malpe will miss on 18 for the outright lead. And then we go to Seve Ballesteros, who will drain the birdie to send this to sudden death. They go to the first hole of sudden death, and Seve Ballesteros will need the bogey putt to tie... And you see, he can't come up with it. J.C. Sneed wins his first tournament since the 1981 Southern Open and $108,000 to boot. Not bad. That's what you call a comeback. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Well, today is Flag Day, and when we come back, you'll meet a Plano man who's celebrating the day in his own special way. It's very simple. Anyone who wants my business has to try harder, too. Lufthansa. People expect the world of us. Volvo, a car company famous for reliability, now offers a roadside assistance plan that owners of cars less famous for reliability might envy. Presenting On Call, a comprehensive roadside plan that includes towing and other emergency services, available without charge for owners of this year's Volvo. The On Call plan from Volvo. Isn't it ironic? The car that has it may just need it the least. Visit your local Volvo dealer for a test drive. Weeknights on the new Newlywed Game. You've kissed more creeps, or your husband's kissed more creeps. Violet, which is truer? He didn't kiss too many people Oh, at he all. wasn't a man about town? <laughs> no, no. You taught him everything he knows? Everything. Isn't that nice? Yeah. You have to be me. Yeah, I believe it, yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because the lady told me, and I believe her. I know. Yeah, she said, yeah, so you've kissed more creeps. That's right. Share the fun. Weeknights at 6.30 following Channel 4 News. Well, this is the day to unfurl old glory and wave the stars and stripes. It's Flag Day. And there's no doubt of the occasion on Quail Run Drive in Plano. Here, vexillologist David Pawson has proudly displayed just a small sample of his collection of flags, numbering 754. These are the 27 official flags of the United States representing the growth of the country through the formation of stars as states were added to the Union. Why does Pawson have such a, an incredibly avid interest in flags? I'm an army brat. My father was in the army for 20 years, and as such, we had a lot of dealings with flag ceremonies. And also, uh, I've always been an avid reader. When I was a child, I used to read the encyclopedia. I'd get stuck in volume F, specifically under flag. I always thought they looked really neat and just kind of developed an interest. <laughs> Pawson says his next big display of flags will go up on the 4th of July, and that's it for us. See you at 10.